Hi, my name is Maria Alonso. I am studying a PhD in the research group TEP229. And here with me is Antonio Guerrero. He is a professor of the Department of Chemical Engineering in the University of Seville, who is going to answer a few questions about bioplastic. First of all, Antonio, what is a bioplastic? Uh, thank you, Maria. Okay, a bioplastic is, uh, is a term that is a little bit controversial. Uh, that is because there are uh, several or different points of view uh, on the subject. Uh, but uh, nowadays the most generally accepted definition is provided by the European uh, Bioplastics, uh, Bioplastics, that is an association of, uh, formed by around uh, 70 companies and they uh, define the term uh, of bioplastic like uh, plastic material that uh, is either bio-based, biodegradable or both. Um, according to this uh, definition, uh, bioplastic is not uh, just a single material, but uh, on the contrary is uh, a big, uh, is consisted of uh, mm, a, a different a range of families with different uh, properties and valid for different applications. Okay, Antonio. And why are these materials so interesting? Actually, the interest of uh, bioplastic comes from the necessity of uh, replacing conventional uh, plastics, of synthetic plastics. Um, this is driven by two uh, problems, two main problems. Uh, the first one is the, f the dependence of non-renewable non uh, fossil resources, uh, oil or uh, uh, natural gas. And the second one is the um, biodegradability that is very poor in this uh, system. Well, it, it is well known that this uh, plastic, conventional plastic, uh, has excellent properties and has been used massively in a wide variety of applications um, for several years, uh, starting at the middle of the 20th century. And therefore, the, this, the disposal of these uh, plastics uh, and uh, and the poor degradability de has uh, produced some serious uh, environmental effects, such as accumulation in the in the um, amber, uh, in, in the landfill and also in the marine uh, media. I understand. So, what would you say are the main difference between conventional plastics and bioplastics? Well, the most distinctive uh, differences are actually the degradation behavior and also the resources that uh, where they can be uh, produced. Um, in fact, these are uh, the target uh, difference for the uh, replacement of uh, conventional plastic by bioplastics. Um, unfortunately, there are other differences. Uh, that um, can affect uh, the application of uh, bioplastics and they refer to the change in uh, mechanical properties and functional properties, uh, particularly for some groups, for example, for the group of, uh, that is most interesting from the point of view of the, um, of the environmental, the, that is uh, the group formed by the biomass-based uh, uh, bioplastics, bioplastics, um, including uh, some uh, material uh, co that consists uh, consist of carbohydrates, for example, starch, uh, ketin and ketosan, or cellulose or and cellulose derivatives, and um, the group uh, formed by proteins. Uh, even either uh, coming from natural, from animal sources uh, such as uh, uh, blood uh, meal, uh, 
gelatin or collagen, and casein, for example, and also plant proteins uh, such as sein, uh, gluten, or soy. Okay, so it is the same a bioplastic and a recycled plastic? No, uh, uh, they are completely different. Actually, uh, one is uh, the recycled plastic is uh, is is used uh, after um, if uh, um, used after the end. Uh, I mean, the use of the, of the end product um, and the bioplastic uh, have been already defined, but both of them are very important. Uh, if uh, we can, if we want to follow a uh, um, arrangement of uh, circular economy, uh, because uh, it is important to recycle, recycle as much as plastic as possible, and to uh, use uh, uh, bioplastic that are not recycled. Okay. They can degrade in the nature, so it's not necessary, not necessary to recycle uh, bioplastics. Uh, in fact, nowadays, 15% uh, of plastics are recycled, of conventional plastics are recycled, while 14% uh, more or less uh, is used as, uh, is incinerated for uh, uh, energy recovery and the rest is discarded to, to the landfills, up around 40%, or even worse, is leaked to the, to the marine litter. Uh, this is uh, around 32%. Okay, uh, so could we use bioplastic in all diary applications where we currently use conventional plastics? And the other way around, are there any specific applications just for bioplastics? Well, some, uh, the answer to the first part of the question depends on the group of bioplastic uh, considered. Uh, the group uh, formed by non-biodegradable but renewable uh, plastics, uh, for example, biopolyethylene or biopolypropylene, are rather competitive with conventional plastics and can be used for the same applications using the, the same processing techniques. Um, the second group, that is uh, those uh, based on fossil uh, um, but uh, biodegradable plastics, for example PCL, uh, they can also show excellent properties in some applications. But uh, the most interesting group that formed by the biomass-based uh, bio bioplastics uh, have some limitations. So it is important to uh, make uh, some further uh, efforts in the research of this uh, group of materials uh, yes, to, to improve their applications, their applicability. Uh, I can put on one example. Um, for example, um, well, the, this is for the second, for the question, for the second, for the answer to the second question. Um, there, there are some specific uh, applications where uh, some bioplastics are better than conventional plastics. For example, in biomedical applications. I can put some examples. Uh, for example, PCL, gelatin, or even ketosan can be used uh, for, uh, as, for scaffolds for tissue engineering because they, uh, they present, they possess uh, very good uh, properties, very good biocompatible properties. But uh, conventional plastic are have uh, some uh, problems with with these applications. Uh, other example that can be um, uh, given is uh, ketosan uh, that has uh, very good properties in wood uh, healing, even in uh, as absorbable uh, uh, sutures. 
and this is these are also biomedical applications where uh, conventional plastic cannot compete uh, with the same properties. Okay, Antonio, uh, can the use of bioplastic result in future problems? Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, all the bioplastics, uh, um, I mean, not all the bioplastic are biodegradable or renewable, so they can show some problems. Uh, moreover, the massive use of bioplastic can also produce some supply problems, particularly those coming from bio-based uh, um, uh, bioplastics. Uh, for example, um, <clears throat> It is, uh, I mean, it, it is more interesting in those cases to produce bioplastic from waste coming from uh, the agro-fruit industry, which is uh, a research line that is uh, currently being promoted. Okay, and are there any abundant and available sources of raw materials for the fabrication? And is this process economically viable? Uh, well, the, the problem is again the same. If we use uh, the, the raw materials for uh, applications such as uh, for non-food applications such as bio bioplastics, uh, we cannot use for food applications. That may be a problem. Uh, th this has been uh, a problem b before. I mean, the, um, there has been some problem with the uh, development of uh, bio di di diesels, bio diesels, uh, because uh, they use um, cereals uh, and they produce, and, and directly they produce a rise in the prices of cereals. Um, this is always a, a problem to, to consider. And, uh, uh, as for the economical fe uh, feasibility of bioplastics, it depends on the, on the group considered. Um, and also on the raw materials and the processing conditions. Okay? Uh, it is true that the cost of uh, raw materials can be less competitive than in conventional plastic, but we have to take into consideration uh, as well the cost for the um, the um, environmental costs. If we put this in the into the balance, we can, in some cases, notice that the balance is uh, is uh, favorable favorable to to the use of bioplastic in instead of uh, conventional plastics. Okay, Antonio. Last question: uh, How can bioplastics be made? Well, the technology um, for uh, producing bioplastics uh, is more or less the same as uh, for conventional plastics. There is not uh, much difference. Uh, I mean, we can use uh, conventional polymer processing techniques such as extrusion, injection molding, compression molding, also casting. Uh, even some some more emerging techniques like uh, electro spinning, uh, but in any case, uh, uh, we have to optimize the process conditions for each case. That is important as well. Okay, thank you so much, Antonio. And for further doubts, there is a following video with the manufacturer techniques for bioplastics. Processing of biodegradable matrices with incorporated micronutrients with application in horticulture. The massive planting in horticulture, due to its great demand, generates a high degradation of the soils, which causes a low crop yield. To avoid this low yield, conventionally, a large amount of fertilizers are supplied directly to the soils although most of them end up contaminating the soil and groundwater due to their high solubility. An alternative way of supplying these fertilizers is through a biodegradable matrix that releases the micronutrients in a controlled way through its degradation and the contribution of water. In addition, it can retain water at providing times of droughts. 
The process for obtaining biodegradable matrices consists of four stages. Mixing the components, producing the bioplastics, removing the glycerol, and obtaining the final matrix. The micronutrient can be comparated both in the mixing and the dipping stages. The first step consists of a homogenization of the components. In this case, soy protein isolate, glycerol, plasticizer that helps the processability of the matrix, and zinc sulfate, sat salt with micronutrient. The mixing step is carried out in a mixer that consists of rotors that are in charge of homogenizing the mixture which is placed into the chamber. The obtaining mass is used in the production of bioplastics. For the production of bioplastic, first an injection molding is carried out. To achieve this, we place the prepared mass in the pre-injection chamber, which is introduced into the injector, where Thanks to the help of a piston, it passed into a mold. In this way, the bioplastic that serves as the basis for creating the matrix is obtained. This bioplastic undergoes anti-hydrothermal treatment where the application of heat helps the structure the protein matrix. The already structured bioplastic goes through an inversion process with the aim of eliminating the plasticizer, since it is very related to water. This process is carried out with water or with saturated solution with zinc sulfate. From this process, we obtain a swollen protein matrix without plasticizer, which contains the micronutrient. Lastly, this matrix goes through a drying stage by freeze drying. To do this, the matrix is first frozen. Then, the frozen matrix is introduced into the freeze dryer, where the water sublimates drying the matrix. In this way, the biodegradable protein matrix loaded with micronutrients is obtained, ready to be introduced into the crop.